Okay, guys, so we're going to go over the basics of Sierra Chart here and how to get set up. Try and do this as quick as I can, just to give you the basics. There's going to be lots of other content on YouTube, I'm sure, on this that's much better than this, but at least for our purposes, here's a little bit of how to get started. Now, when you open it up, you're going to have something like this. This is uh, the example chart book that comes with it when you open it. So the first thing you want to do is close all chart books. doesn't matter if you save or not. There, because you have a whole bunch of Forex symbols and stuff on that one. It's just the way it comes pre-packaged. Now, I already did this video, <laughs> and I realized that part of the screen was cut off. So I'm just going to create a new one from scratch here. So what we're going to do is you want to go new chart book, not new chart, because you want to make a nested chart book that you can put things together on. So we go new chart book. Okay, now we have a new chart book called chart book one right now. Now we're going to go to find symbol. Okay, it's going to give us a list of future symbols. So let's start with looking for the micro ES, MES. Micro ES is on the CME. The indexes are all in the CME, except for the Dow index. It's on the Chicago Board of Trade, the CBOT. There, micro E mini S&P 500. Click there to open it. You see the different contract months. It tells you that March has already expired, so we're going to choose June. Open intraday chart. There. Okay, so now we've got a chart. What is it, a one minute? of the micro ES. So we're gonna to wanna to change some things about this. So we're gonna go chart, chart settings. Now this here has got kind of infinite uh, customization with your chart. We're just gonna keep it simple for now. There's an awful lot of stuff you can do here to explore and make it the way you want it to. So we're gonna decide what kind of chart we want. Down here, graph draw type. You can have open, high, low, close like bars. Have candlestick bars, candlestick bodies only. Uh, the candles that get fatter as the volume gets higher. Uh, Renko bricks. Renko bricks with wicks. That's kind of interesting. Uh, somebody had asked about, about Renko before, and I mentioned it. I didn't like you couldn't see the wicks. Well, now you can. They have this where you can see the wicks, which is, might be pretty cool. Point and vigor, all that stuff. So, for us, candlestick bars. Want to use the evening session? Want the evening session data in here? You can set it to just take the day session also. New bar at session start. Load all weekend data. Yeah, let's leave that the same. Automatically roll over future symbol. You can do that if you want. I leave it and it will notify me whenever it's time to roll over and then I'll start looking at the volume between the two contract months. Chart bar period. Days, minutes, seconds per bar. So zero days, one minutes, zero seconds. So this is where we can change the type of bar we want. We can have volume, okay, volume bars, number of contracts per bar, number of trades per bar. That is the tick chart. That's what we want. But there's other things too. So let's go with number of trades per bar. Now, being this is the micro ES has about half the volume, so we're going to try 2,000 ticks instead of 4,000. And that's really all we need for now. It's going to go apply and then OK. And here we have a chart that looks pretty similar to the charts that I the chart that I use. By clicking on the bottom here and dragging back and forth, you can make it larger or smaller. You can roll back and forth with your mouse. Roll your mouse forward, goes forward and back. You can use this to drag the price up and down like this, okay, just to drag yourself up and down. It's not nearly as easy to navigate as trading view, that's for sure, but... Okay, so now we move this over a little bit to make some room. So now what we're going to do here, open trading DOM for chart, okay? That's going to pop up in another window here, and now we've got our DOM. So we're just going to size this a little bit smaller, put it right here, maybe a little bit more than that. You can have this in another monitor also, but just to try and fit it on one screen for you to see. So now we have a DOM for this. Now, there's a couple things we're going to do right away. We're going to change this to window always visible, okay, so it doesn't get lost underneath your chart. That's kind of important. And then we're going to set up our OCOs. OCOs are one cancels the other order. So what that is, is we can set it so that as soon as we enter, it gives us a take profit and a stop right away, automatically placed. There's one that comes with it here just says simple bracket. So we're going to use that. We select simple bracket up here at the top. Then we're going to go to targets right here. Okay, we got our target set at eight ticks and our stop at eight ticks just by default. All right. Just got one target, one stop. You can add targets, you can add stops, all kinds of different strategies if you want. In this case, we're just going to change our first target to 16. So that way we have a four point target and a two point stop just as a default. There. So we go back to it. We see it's already there. Just remembers it when you do it the first time. And we want to use attached orders. That's checked. So then whenever we go to take a trade, say we go short here, 
Why isn't it showing our position on the chart? Aha, uh -huh. chart trade mode on. So you have to make sure that's on, guys, under trade. Chart trade mode on. That's why we couldn't see that. Good old Sierra doing something like that for you. Let's go and attach this. Okay, this is just a SIM trade, though, as you can see, this is green, therefore it's SIM. This says SIM1. Here, let's just get out here. Now, if you click this, it will pull up your actual account numbers, whichever, if you have one account or two accounts, whatever, it'll pull up there. So in order to switch to live, you'd have to click that or go over here and then go to see trade simulation mode on, click that, then it's going to confirm with you that you're switching to live. Okay, so just say no for now. Now I'm just going to go to this always on top. Yeah, this should say always visible and always on top. That way, when you go and choose something else like this, it doesn't disappear. You can also attach it to the chart, but it always wants to attach to the left. And I like to have this on the right where the price is. Now, there is probably a way to attach it to the right, but that's beyond my scope. So that gives you an idea of how a trade works. Okay, now that we're able to show our trades on the screen, <laughs> let's just try a buy trade here, because it's probably going to go a couple of ticks up, I would think, from here. I'm going to show you the break-even button. You see where it is right there? That's your break-even button. Moves your stop to break-even with one click. Okay, there, now we're out of break-even. So those are your friends. You can buy that the market, sell at the market, and you can buy or sell at the bid or the ask. Or you can just look on the chart right here. Place it by there. You place it by at 97.50. Okay, break even. Then it takes us out because price was there. You can also sell it. All right, sell there. You got a sell limit now up here. When it gets up to here, to limit. When you sell above the market, it becomes a limit. Okay, let me just click over here to cancel that order right on it itself. When you click the DOM at a price above the market to sell, it becomes a sell limit. But for day trading, you're going to mostly just be placing market orders or you're going to sell at the bid or the ask type of thing. So let's see here. If we want to go short at 98, okay, this turns into a limit then. Let it come up to 98. It may not. It might hold at 97.50. So we move this down here, okay? It moves our whole trade with us. We want to sell it there if it gets up to 98. Then if we just want to get out, we can just hit flat there and you're flat. Now these here are numbers, one contract, two contract, four, five, eight, okay, so on. Okay, enough of that. So we've got that. Now another thing you're going to want to probably do is open up a time and sales window. So for that, you're going to go to chart, open time and sales window. There, there's your time and sales. Okay. Now this is place, this is showing like everything, every order. We'll just make it bigger so you can see what information you get here. This is every trade that's coming through on the micro ES right now. See the price and the time right down to the millisecond, the quantity of each order. So you can see, okay, a two order, four, three, ten. We can adjust this, okay, to a size that fits us better, something a little more palatable. Now what I do, settings, input filtering. So, so anything that's greater than or equal to, say, say just for, for fun, ten contracts, okay? Anything equal or greater than 10 contracts will show up on this list. It filters everything else out. Okay, so suddenly we have a lot less. These are only 10 contracts or more. Now, the other thing you can do is you can add an alert for a price or for volume. I have an alert for volume. At, I think it's at 500 on mine. So say you want to make it at 50 on this. Okay, so any orders 50 contracts or greater, it dings. So you have an audible alert to that. Now you don't want to say equal to, you would say equal to for price, but in this case, you want greater than or equal to. We're going to show any trades that are greater than or equal to 10 contracts, and we're going to have an actual alert for anything greater than or equal to 50 contracts. Every time you reset it, it resets this and you can just click clear. Okay. So right now we're not having any 10 contract trades that appears come through, but eventually there will be some. If we go back here and change it greater than or equal to five, apply. Then you, know, you see a bunch of them come in at five. So these are the actual orders that are coming through and executed like right now as it goes. Okay, so that's time and sales. You're gonna want that. Another thing kind of handy to have is a market depth window. Now, another thing you may wanna do that I quite like to do is set up a quote board, okay? So you go to file, new quote board. Now we've got ourselves a little quote board here. So you go to symbols, now this here, there's nothing you can click on under here. So as far as it knows, there's only this cell exists. This top one is referring to this cell. Okay, your symbol list. So we're going to add a few. 
So this is just inserting those. So now you see I can I can go and and I've got four. So we're going to set it up really quick to have a quote board for the indexes. Again, we've got, we've got four. We're going to select our top one, okay? And then we're going to look for MES find. It's going to open up our our symbol list here. We're going to find our micro ES again. There we go. There it is. Okay, micro ES June. Okay, okay. And then we're going to go close. And there it is. It's going to take a minute. I'm going to add the other ones. Micro Mini Dow. June. Okay. There's Micro Mini NASDAQ. Micro Mini Russell. June. Okay. We got them all in there in this order. Close. So we can make this a little smaller. All right. This is all kind of stuff that you want to have. You can remove these columns if you want any of these, but I kind of like to have them on there. So now we're a little condensed. Now we don't need this here, so the name, because we, we're going to know it by the symbol name anyway. There. So now we've got a nice condensed little quote board. Now that we got all this work done, you know, if in this case what we can do is we can move this out of the way. We can make this a little bit smaller just to get it on the same screen, okay? Move this over here. And then we can kind of make ourselves a nice little spot so we can fit our time and sales in here. So now I've just resized all these windows. We make ourselves a nice little setup. Our quote board is probably going to have to go on another monitor, you know, to be fair. So we'll just leave it here for now. All right. And what you want to do for sure is now go to save as. We want to save our chart book. Okay. I'm going to call this MES or micro ES. We're going to save. Now, this work that we've done to create all this stuff is saved now. So whenever we leave Sierra chart, okay, or we close all chart books in this case, close them all. Then we're going to go over here, click on our MES. It's all there together the way that we made it. That's really important because if you don't, it doesn't always save and you come back and you're going to start over and do all this again. And that's really no fun. <laughs> so guys, I hope that's enough to get you started anyway. Sierra chart's got all kinds of quirks. Um, it's not that easy to use. It's not all that intuitive, but it will like never let you down. So this will get you far enough to get something started to work with. Then go fool around and try and figure it out the rest of your way if you can. Hope this has been helpful. Questions and comments always welcome down there. My mailing list is down there if you'd like to join. It's free. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.